there's a saying that you only have a certain amount of heartbeats in your life. Basically, the faster your heart beats, the faster you're going to go through your heartbeats and thus die faster. Now, this is more thought to be like a urban legend or like some sort of a proverb, but when you look at the science and studies, then there is actually some association between higher resting heart rate and increased risk of mortality. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at two major indicators of your heart health in relation to your heartbeats. The big idea is that a lower resting heart rate while having a higher heart rate variability is good for your health and it is associated with the lowest risk of all cause mortality. A meta-analysis that included about 1.2 million people found that compared to 45 beats per minute, every 10 beats per minute increment was linked to a 9% higher risk of all-cause mortality and 8% for cardiovascular disease mortality. The individuals with a resting heart rate of 60 to 80 beats per minute had a 12% higher risk for all-cause mortality and 8% for cardiovascular disease mortality. Those with a resting heart rate above 80 had a 45% higher risk for all-cause mortality and 33% for cardiovascular disease mortality. An excessively high resting heart rate directly promotes atherosclerosis, myocardial ischemia, hypertension, and ventricular arrhythmias. So based on this very large meta-analysis, the lowest risk of mortality comes when your resting heart rate is 45. But usually it's only said that athletes are able to get to a resting heart rate of 45. The vast majority of people have a resting heart rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute. This already increases their all-cause mortality by 12 to 45 percent compared to the individuals with a resting heart rate of 45 beats per minute. And that's actually considered to be like a standard in some way that the regular people, if they have a resting heart rate of 60, then it's considered to be normal and there's nothing to really worry about. <laughs> but when you look at the meta-analysis that I just mentioned, then already if you have 10 beats above 45 beats per minute, so 55 beats per minute, already increases your all-cause mortality by 9%. And if your heart rate is above that, like 75 or 80, then that's significantly higher, up to 45% higher. So the general guidelines or the standards, the kind of average recommendations to like what your heart rate should be, is already failing people in terms of reducing their risk of mortality. If you tell people that, yes, having a heart rate of 60 to 80 is normal, then you're actually telling them that it's okay for you to have an increased risk of mortality of 18 to 24% or 25%. And that's actually something really crazy. Like if you are a healthy person who tries to improve their health and tries to optimize their longevity, etc., then you should try to strive towards the 45 beats per minute for your resting heart rate, because that's with the lowest risk of all-cause mortality, and every 10 beats per minute increase already increases your all-cause mortality risk by 9%. It's a trap. So what are the things that raise your resting heart rate? How can you lower it down? Getting older is generally associated with an increase in resting heart rate, except for very later in your life. Having a high body weight and a BMI is linked to a higher resting heart rate. The lowest resting heart rates are found between a BMI of 19 to 24 and everything above 30 significantly increases your resting heart rate. Sleeping less than 7 hours does increase your resting heart rate because of the sleep deprivation and stress. But if you sleep more than 9 hours then that generally is associated with also higher resting heart rate because if you need to sleep over 9 hours then there might be something wrong with your health or recovery. Here's how to lower your resting heart rate. Exercise is one of the best ways to lower your resting heart rate during the physical activity. Obviously your heart rate increases significantly. Your heart rate can be up to three to five times higher than your resting heart rate. But what exercise does is that it causes a chain reaction of adaptations that lead to a lower resting heart rate when you're not exercising. So if you think about the proverb that you have a certain amount of heartbeats in your life, then exercise is actually still one of the best ways to make sure that you don't go through your heartbeats too fast. Then exercise is certainly something that you actually need to do because while exercising, yes, your heart rate increases, but all the other hours of the day, your resting heart rate goes significantly lower. If you're not exercising, then you don't go through the high resting heart rates of like 150 or something like that, but your basal resting heart rate is going to be significantly higher than 45 beats per minute, for example. There's also evidence that sauna use 
lowers resting heart rate because of the similar effects as exercise. It causes a positive stress to the heart and your cardiometabolic health. Intermittent fasting has also been shown to lower resting heart rate. My own personal resting heart rate is consistently between 35 to 38, which is actually very low. And for my age, then that's the kind of athletic range. But let's move on with HRV, heart rate variability. Heart rate variability or HRV describes the variation in the heartbeats. Instead of your heart beating like a clock, there's variation between the heartbeats and HRV measures those intervals in milliseconds. Decreased HRV has been shown to be a predictor of mortality after myocardial infarction and sudden cardiac death. A meta-analysis of 32 cohort studies found that compared to patients with cardiovascular disease who had a high HRV, those with a low HRV had a 121% and 46% increased risk of all-cause death and cardiovascular events respectively. A meta-analysis of 32 studies among healthy people found that the lowest quartile of HRV versus the other quartiles yielded a 56 higher hazard ratio for mortality. Generally, a higher HRV is similar to having a lower resting heart rate, meaning that your body is less stressed out and your body is more recovered. If your HRV is very low, then that's either a sign of poor fitness poor metabolic health, some sort of a disease, some sort of chronic disease, some sort of an infection like a cold or a virus, or it could also be a sign that you have been overtrained, you have just exercised too much or you're not sleeping enough or your body is under too much stress. Low HRV is also a sign of aging because HRV declines with age. So a higher HRV not only indicates better health and a lower risk of mortality, but also reflects some aspects of biological age. My own average HRV ranges from 100 to 130, which is excellent and much higher than the average for my age. So here are the things that lower your HRV. Daily worrying and emotional strain, PTSD, blood sugar fluctuations, inflammation and infections, drinking alcohol and sleep deprivation. Here are the things that increase your HRV. Exercise, especially cardio, intermittent fasting, saunas, cold exposure, music therapy, mindfulness, meditation, yoga, and vagus nerve stimulation that you can achieve with cold therapy or gargling water. There are very few things that you can measure at your home that will immediately tell like what is your fitness status and what is your cardiometabolic health status. Of course, you can't do a blood test every day. You could have a blood pressure device at your home to measure your blood pressure, which is also a very important biomarker, but tracking your resting heart rate and HRV with different kinds of devices is one of the easiest and one of the like most convenient, most accurate ways on a daily basis to assess your cardiometabolic health and your cardiovascular health. If there's only one thing you take away from this video, it is that try to lower your resting heart rate by becoming fitter, by losing some weight, by managing your stress and sleep, and try to also increase your HRV, which is generally done with the same things, like you increase your HRV and you lower your resting heart rate with exercise, with saunas, with a good diet, losing weight, etc., and sleeping enough. So the activities are generally the same. You just want to make sure that you lower your resting heart rate slightly and increase your HRV. But do you want to slow down aging and live longer? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.